Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Continuing our discussions with mayoral candidates. Today we're joined by Don Koziak. Uh, you're uh, the owner of the Chateau Louis Hotel. Part owner. Part owner. And you've decided to throw your hat in the ring of politics. Why? Uh, well, I've tried before. Uh, I, I, I have uh, run three times for city council. Okay. Unsuccessfully. I was runner-up in, in, oh, uh, in 98 and second runner-up last election. And uh, time, timing looked good this time for uh, mayor. For a shot at the mayor. Yeah. Okay. Now, why? obviously you're trying over and over again to get on council. Why is this important to you? Uh, that's a good question, I guess, because it's, uh, it's been done at, at great personal expense. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I do think I have some good ideas that uh, will make my life better, make my children's lives better, and uh, help all Edmontonians. Right. Now, when you came out first, there was, uh, right off the bat, you were deemed as the main challenger for Mayor Mandel, which sounds like a compliment right off the bat, but then the critiques started coming in. You were criticized for stepping up so late in the game as far as just putting forth your papers and people are wondering why that was the case. You've also, uh, the Edmonton Journal referred to you as being half asleep and ill-prepared. How come your campaign has been such a dud? Uh, obviously you're somebody that wants to do something for the city. When you're reading these sorts of reviews, what, what are you thinking? Well, uh, I, I think those comments came from Scott and Scott's got his uh, preconception about me with the Edmonton Airport uh, you're talking Scott McKean. With Scott McKean, yeah. uh, dating back to '95 when the uh, when the second plebiscite happened, uh, and I was on the other side of him and Graham Hicks, and and they've held it against me ever since. So. Well, you know, and it's not just him because the Sun has also come out and and said s similar things, just saying that you seem to have a good chance, but you're going out of your way at every turn to hurt your chances. Do you agree with these perceptions? Uh, I don't. I don't, not. I don't agree with that. Yeah. No. I mean, I. Uh, it's it's very difficult putting yourself out in the in the spotlight, and, and I know there's lots of people out there that that feel strongly about civic issues, and um, for whatever reason they they don't want to put their name forward, and uh, I've always felt it's a, it's a responsibility to to do so, and uh, unfortunately uh, you get uh, attacked mm -hmm. by by certain elements of the population just because you're running, and they think that. If you're running, you must be a politician. If you're a politician, you must be evil. So, and uh, I, I, I'm, I put my name forward at the last moment, partly because I enjoyed my summer as uh, a regular uh, member of the public, just right. like everybody else. So. Did, it, did you go last moment because like, it was part of the strategy or because you were waiting to decide, is this what I really want to do? Well, it was partly strategy. strategy. It was also partly to see who else was going to be running. I'm, uh, had Mike Nickel, for instance, uh, decided to throw his name in the ring, he would have been clearly the the, uh, the number one challenger, and it wouldn't have been possible to uh, mount an effective campaign. So I didn't know, you know, maybe a Pat LaForge or a, or Daryl Katz or somebody was sitting in the woodwork uh, with substantial resources behind them that decided that they wanted to make a run for the... Okay. I mean, the deadline's there. I, I would think if you get your name in before that, then you're in like everybody else. Well, it, it shouldn't the, really make a difference. The, yeah. The way it works is uh, you have to file your papers from 9 a.m. till noon on September 17th. So mm -hmm. before that, no matter what anybody says, they're not running. Right. And uh, after that, here we are. Well, let's talk about some of the things on your, on your platform then. One of the things that I find interesting is that you say within 100 days of taking office, you're going to make a difference with traffic flow in the city, which I'm thinking... How can it be that simple? Well, uh, well on my way here, for instance, uh, there's, there's numerous uh, pedestrian lights throughout the city where the pedestrian pushes a button and the light turns to yellow and then red. Mm -hmm. And the pedestrian walks across the street and, uh, and then I'm sitting on, on my way here this morning. I'm sitting there waiting on 109th Street for nothing. Mm -hmm. There's a red light. Uh, we could make it so that after a few seconds of red, the light starts flashing red thereby I'd be able to proceed if the pedestrian had gone in front of me. It could change to a fa flashing amber shortly after that and then turn to green after that so that the effect of the pedestrian light is, is still accomplished but 
you and I are not waiting there for no reason, if there is no reason to stop. Right. People complain now that the pedestrian lights aren't long enough for people to actually walk across the street. So that might be a challenge. Well, I mean, you could, you could extend the flashing yellow phase for as mm -hmm. long as it, I mean, we have other flashing pedestrian yellow lights throughout the city that also work. But this would cost nothing as far as hardware goes. And uh, it's just a simple programming change. Something so, you think would work. Yeah. Um, some other stuff, uh, obviously pothole snow removal, big deal this year. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, the city did uh, step up to the plate at the end of the, of the season last year by uh, getting people onto retainers. I mean, it's, it's, it's not realistic to expect, expect snow plow removers to sit at home and wait for the snow. Uh, just, just to wait for a call and put all other yeah. jobs aside, yeah. Uh, so they did put them on retainers, and that's a, that's a positive step. It, we should see an improvement this year, but uh, uh, it also happened to be you know, right before the election, and uh, and I'd like to see some removal of the residential streets as a matter of course, not as a matter of convenience. Sort of sounds like that's where they're trying to go now. I mean, it sure took a, a huge uproar to, to get that to happen. Uh, property tax increases. Yeah, you'd like to see that uh, change the way it's done right now. Well, I'd like to see it kept to the rate of inflation as a maximum. Uh, I think there are uh, there are places where we can save some money in the city. Uh, I know the City of Edmonton employees do a fantastic job, but I think that there's probably people that are sitting there coasting along in their jobs thinking, you know, I, 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 could, I could do something else. And if we maybe provided some incentive, you know, whether that's a, a year's salary, if you tell us how you can get rid of your, uh, yourself, mm -hmm. uh, we'd get people to step away from their positions and, and save some money in the long run, but uh, not have them they feel like they uh, are putting their livelihood in jeopardy. Right. One last question for you. You'd like to see Edmontonians use public transportation a little bit more, so you'd like to come up with some incentives. Yeah, well, uh, three years ago when I ran, I know that the uh, U-Pass was an important thing for, for the, at the University of Alberta. I, didn't, I don't know what it was like on the other campuses, but they did have a uh, plebiscite on that issue, and the majority of students that voted decided that they would want to go with the U-Pass, which is a standard pass for all students at a flat rate that's a lot cheaper than, uh, than a regular bus pass. Um, they could try something like that with the city employees. There's so, well, there sort of is a program in place right now that the city is doing. Uh, my wife and her company have signed up with the city, and she gets a bus pass at a discounted rate because both the company and the city are offering some discounts. Okay. So it sort of sounds like what you might be talking about. Okay, well, I, I wasn't aware that there already was such a program in mm -hmm. place, but... That's, yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about. And you'd like to see something like that expanded yeah. then? I mean, if you have a bus pass or a, a transit pass in your, in your wallet, you're more inclined to use it uh, without thinking about it. If you have to shell out every time you come up to the, uh, up to the turnstile, mm -hmm. uh, then you start to think, well, should I be driving? Should I be parking? But uh, if, if we can include something that's already in your wallet all the time, people might be more inclined yeah. to use it. Thank you very much for coming in this morning. My Good pleasure. luck with your chances. Yeah, and uh, Don Koziak, if you'd like to find out more about his campaign, you can check out his website. It's www.donkoziak.ca. You can email him at don at donkoziak.ca. Phone him, 432-4576. Let's hand things off now to Michelle, Bridget, and Wendy.